Now we're going to take a look at a submission from the butterfly guard, the reverse arm bar. Very uncommon to see this, but it's good to have in your arsenal to keep people honest when they're in butterfly guard top. All right, so I've gotten into the butterfly position, and I ultimately wanted the double under grips, but Alan is good, and he knows that he wants to pass. So he starts to bring that underhook in, and maybe he's going to force himself into half guard. Maybe he's just going to hop the corner, whatever. But I've ended up with an over under grip. It's important that the hand that's underneath is waving palm up and I'm pulling him in and he started to get that inside head control. Oh my God, life is gonna be bad, okay? So what I wanna do is I wanna move my hips back underneath and start to create a little bit of upward pressure just like we learned in that last video. When I start to make some upward pressure, you can see that it's giving me an out over here and I've got strong control with my hands, okay? I am gonna push away lightly with my legs so that I can clear this forearm around the front of his face. Awesome. Now you can see I've got domination of that shoulder. Nice and tight gable grip, no thumbs right here. We'll worry about this arm going in the crook of our shoulder and our neck when I move my hips. You'll see that I'll lift my elbow just a little bit. So watch my shrimping motion. I'm gonna move my hips laterally, not linearly. If I move linearly, I'm not gonna get this arm bar. So I come here, I move my hips out, and you can see that I brought that butterfly hook out in that space I created when I up and uh, hoisted him up with the elevator. So that knee is gonna come up nice and tight and I let my bottom leg drag on the bottom. From here, I'm gonna come over, I'm gonna take my good uh, I Dream of Genie grip and I'm gonna finish. Now, we're gonna look at this at a different angle, but I must tell you, my bottom leg that I let drag is much differently than you were probably taught at your school. A lot of people teach to sandwich that uh, shoulder between the knees. This is the way that I was originally taught. I think that's probably the way you were originally taught. And there's nothing wrong with that, but I think that the top leg is the important leg, all right, for two reasons. Number one, if I bring that top knee up and I don't have my bottom knee under the shoulder, that means your chest is flat on the floor. If your chest is flat on the floor, it isolates that shoulder and really cranks up the pressure. Number two, when your chest is on the floor, it makes it difficult for you to turn your chest towards me. Turning your chest towards me is what starts to relieve that pressure. So not only does it make it tighter, but it makes it more difficult to defend. One of the things that I've discovered as I move through the ranks, really more through brown belt and black belt, isn't necessarily the, the what of a technique. I have people tell me or show me techniques all the time, but what I'm interested in is the why of the technique. And the why I do this technique the way I do, I just told you, so it's, it's tighter and more difficult to defend. Now, when somebody says, well, you should squeeze the shoulder because X, you know, because my instructor told me to, or because it gives you more domination in the shoulder, I've done it both ways. And I think that the way that I do it is a little bit tighter. If somebody tells me I'm always open to listen to why, I might come down the road five years from now and go, hey, you know, we want to squeeze the shoulder on both sides but I haven't had anyone explain it to me in a way or show me in a way that th makes me think it's better than the way that I do it. So let's look at it again from a different angle. And again, take notice of that bottom leg and look at how I do my reverse arm ball. All right, I'm going over, under, uh-oh. Alan has that inside head control. I know I'm gonna be in trouble. So I'm gonna move my hips underneath him, launch him up a little bit, okay? Again, I've got that good over, under grip. And I come here, you can see that I'm keeping him elevated a little bit and I'm gonna push him away to make that forearm come around the front of the neck. And I've got good downward pressure. Can you feel what I'm talking about, Alan? Now, I'm gonna move my hips out to clear this arm. Boom, and here. Now you can see this bottom leg is getting lazy. I don't care if you straighten it all the way back behind the body. I'm gonna put pressure with this top knee down, and I'm gonna control my hands. The way that you finish here, you can control with your, your cutter grip, you can control at the elbow. I don't care, this is the way that I show the white belts because it's the easiest, okay? so. Over, under, oh my God, he's gonna flatten me out if I stay here. Hips in, I launch, now from here, I'm gonna extend, bring that forearm around. Hip out, that knee is high. Good downward pressure, mm. finish. Right. Up, push him away. Forearm in front of the face. Hip out, knee is nice and tight. Take the arm. Takes a little bit of play with the hips to really understand that, and clearing that forearm around the head, can be difficult. It, becomes, it comes in two motions, up and out. It can't go one, two, it's more like one, two. Rep it out, it's the only way you're gonna get it. 